Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Miss Walker Story Time. So here is the recording from our stories this morning. So we're going to start with the teacher from the Black Lagoon. This is one of my favorite funny stories. Um, I love this series. The Black Lagoon series is written by Mike Thayer. Not only does he do these picture books, but he also does um, some chapter books too. So the teacher from the Black Lagoon. It's the first day of school. I wonder who my teacher is. I hear Mr. Smith has dandruff and warts, and Mrs. Jones has a whip and a wig. But Mrs. Green is supposed to be a real monster. Oh, I have her. Mrs. Green, room 109. What a bummer. I sit at my desk and I fold my hands. I close my eyes. I'm too young to die. Then suddenly a shadow covers the door and it opens. In slithers Mrs. Green. She's really green. She has a tail and scratches her name on the blackboard with her claws. Ooh. Freddie Jones throws a spitball. She curls up her lips and breathes fire at him. Freddy's gone. There's just a pile of ashes on his desk. Talk about bad breath, giggles Eric Porter. She slithers over and unscrews his head and puts it on the globe stand. I bet she gives homework on the first day of school. Your homework today, green, grins Mrs. Green, smoke rising from her nostrils, is pages 1 to 200 in your math book, all fraction problems. We've never had fractions, shouts Derek Bloom. Come here, she beckons with her claw. Derek stands by her desk. This is a boy, she smirks. She takes a big bite. This is a half of boy. Now you've had fractions. Doris Foodle cracks her gum. Mrs. Green swallows her in one gulp. No chewing gum in class, she smiles. Mr. Bender, the principal, sticks his head in. Keep up the good work. He nods and closes the door. Oh, I wish I could get to the principal's office. Let's call roll, crackles Mrs. Green. Freddie Jones is absent. Derek Blooms is half here. Eric Porter is here and there. And Mrs. Dodal is digesting. What about spelling, shouts Randy Potts. Spelling can be fun, beams Mrs. Green, wiggling her fingers at him. Agricadabracazam. That's a tough spell, says Randy. Suddenly, there's a flash of light, a puff of smoke, and Randy's a frog. Penny Weber raises her hand. Can I go to the nurse, she whines. What's wrong, asks Mrs. Green. I have a huge headache, Penny says. Mrs. Green wiggles her fingers, and there's a flash of light, and Penny's head is the size of a pin. Better, asks Mrs. Green. Nap time, everyone. Everyone who still has one, put your head on your desk. Oh, I hope I make it to recess. Sweet dream, she crackles as I close my eyes. Suddenly the bell rings and I wake up. There's a pretty woman writing her name on the blackboard. She re has real skin and no tail. I'm Mrs. Green, your teacher, she smiles. I jump out of my chair and run to hug her. Well, thank you, she says. I'm glad to be here. Not as glad as I am. So it was all a bad dream in his imagination, wasn't it? All right, so our next book is called Octavia and Her Purple Ink Cloud by Donna and Doreen Ramphill. Octavia Octopus lived alone in a small secret cave in a cor colorful coral wreath. She had many friends, so she was never lonely. She and her friends played a game called How to Hide from a Hungry Creature. Octavia clapped all eight arms when Paul the porcupine fish puffed up to show how he could confuse a hungry creature. He was so big and prickly that Octavia knew that Paul would be safe. Octavia bragged that she could squirt purple ink cloud to escape. Watch me, she said as she squirted. A yellow ink cloud? Oh no, I better practice, she cried. 
Octavia laughed when Sandy Seahorse showed how she could, he could hold onto a plant with his tail. He swayed in the water like he was part of the plant, and she knew that he would be safe. Octavia boasted she could squirt a purple ink cloud to escape, and she squirted an orange ink cloud. Oh, no, I better practice, she sighed. Octavia cheered as Freddie Flounder changed colors and hit on the ocean floor. Freddie's eyes went in different directions to watch all around him. Octavia explained that she could escape with a purple ink cloud, and she squirted. <sighs> a green ink cloud. Oh, no, I better practice, she moaned. Octavia giggled as Greta C Green, Green Sea Turtle showed how she could hide in the grass. It was hard to see where she was. Octavia claimed that she could squirt a purple ink cloud to escape. She squirted a red ink cloud. Oh no, I better practice, she groaned. Octavia smiled as Carolyn the Clownfish showed how she could dart into a sea anemone to hide. Octavia knew that the sea anemone with stinging tentacles would help protect Carolyn. Octavia hoped she could squirt purple ink cloud to escape. She squirted a blue ink cloud. Oh no, I better practice, she whined. Octavia was jumping up and down as Polly the pirate fish showed her how she could hide in the holes in the coral reef. Just then, a giant, big, hungry shark swam around the reef, heading right towards them. Paul Porcupine puffed up to confuse the shark. Sandy Seahorse held tight to a plant. Flounder, Freddie Flounder hid on the ocean floor, and Greta the Sea Turtle hid in the grass. Carolyn the Clownfish darted into the sea anemone, and Polly the Piratefish hid in a small hole in the reef. Octavia turned white with fright and thought, I better squirt a purple ink cloud so I can swim away. She thought very hard and squirted a big dark purple ink cloud and the shark could not see Octavia as she swam to her home in her cozy safe case. Phew, she thought. It's a good thing I practiced. The big hungry shark swam away with an empty belly. And that's the end. And this story is based on facts and at the end of the book it gives you some more information about the actual octopuses and the creatures that were in our story. Cool, huh? All right, well, that brings us to the end of our story time today. I know it was short and sweet with just two stories, but we'll get back next tomorrow with more stories I have for you.